everyone, and welcome to another edition of Inside the Box with Don Sagarese. We're here talking about some of our uh, fantastic virtual experiences that we ship directly to your door. And today we're in conversation with Leslie Gibson. Uh, Leslie is uh, one of the city's most renowned hosts. Her attention to detail and dedication to her clients has made her uh, a, a bona fide legend in the hospitality and wine industry. Uh, her career spans over 20 years. She's worked internationally. A sommelier, she has embarked uh, on the highlight of her career, as she is, she'll tell us about, with Gibson Family Group, creating a home for some other very inspiring wine angels that she'll tell us about. Uh, with every producer that the Gibson Family Group works with and every wine that they hand select, it's Leslie's goal to share her passion with everyone she meets and expand everybody's wine knowledge all along the way. So uh, welcome today to our, our good friend and, uh, and hostess with the mostest, Ms. Leslie Gibson. I, I'm going to applaud for you here for yourself. Nice thank to see you, Leslie. How are you? Thank you, John. I'm very well. And yourself? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. We're, uh, we're literally and figuratively inside the box here today. You see with the backdrop, I see you on your screen. You look great. Thanks for joining us. Um, we'll get right into it because I know you've got a lot of uh, insight and a lot of experience to share with us today here at uh, Ascari Hospitality Group. Um, one of the principles, as I understand it, about the Gibson wine family is that uh, you're guided by women. This is one of the major pillars of the business. And uh, was there a specific moment in, in your career trajectory when you knew that you wanted to work in wine and that you knew you wanted to sort of sink your teeth into guiding this business from, from the, your perspective? I, I wouldn't say that there was a moment. I, I mean, I never thought I was going to work in wine when I started out in my career. I mean, I was in the advertising world and I sort of fell into the restaurant scene and it, and it guided me on this path um, to opening restaurants and, and being so submersed in that. Um, and with that whole the restaurant world, that's where my passion for wine sort of developed. I mean, I always liked to drink it, but, um, you know, it wasn't something that I just woke up and said, this is what I want to do. I feel like it's always a journey that you're on and you go down many different paths and, you know, some take you some places and others then lead you to what you want to do. But regarding the, um, the women focal point, you know, um, gosh, it's been, you're very kind to say over 20 years, but it's been more like over 25. And uh, this industry is a really big boys club for so long um, as a female sommelier, as a female restaurateur, you know, back in the day, things were a lot different where they are now. So it was one of those things where I just thought, you know, it's time, there, it's always been such a boys club that it was time to, have a girls club but with the girls club you know allowing for uh, inclusiveness and not so gender sort of specific but to have a group of women together and and go that route yeah what I find and, and thank you and what I find is that when when men do things they create what appears always from the outward looking in as a club and mm -hmm. when women tend to gather and and bring great ideas together it becomes more approachable and more inclusive. And, uh, and, and I know a lot about Gibson Wine Group, and I know that you're an inclusive group of individuals. And I'm even reluctant to use the word women because it almost has no place in the conversation. You're experts in your field, regardless of your gender, and, and you're trying to make wine more approachable and inclusive for everybody. Which leads me to another question. What inspired you to actually have all the great ideas you have manifest in the Gibson family group as an entity? I, I believe it's just, you know, it was accumulation of all my years in, in the restaurant industry. And to, to go back, this was an industry I fell into and fell in love because you're, you know, am I allowed to swear? You're batshit crazy to be in the, the restaurant industry on a good day. You know, people think it's, it's so glamorous and everything else. And it is, it is such a, a love to be in it because it's really unforgiving and extremely difficult as you guys know so well, and you do, you know, excel at your game. But um, yeah, it was just after, after that, it was just sort of like I had gone as far as I could go and I thought, you know, what's another avenue that I could, that would make sense. And um, 
the wine agency part just seemed like uh, the right, right. It just seemed like the next step for me, if that makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and listen, I'm, I'm a person who subscribes to the idea that we become who we are in this world. And that journey that we do take, regardless of what happens, leads us to the spot we're effectively supposed to be in. This is the, I, I mean, to, you're 100% right, because uh, Gibson Family Group, or how we love to say GFG, because everything you always get short. And, um, it, you know, it, it was like the stars aligned, for lack of a better expression. Um, it was honestly the easiest business I've ever set up and done um, out of all the restaurants that I've opened and, you know, and, and closed and that sort of thing. Um, this was just, honestly, it just, it, it was in the natural progression. And that's why I call it the highlight of my career. Well, and, and it is interesting because, you know, if, if, you, if the people watching take the literal definition of what, what makes a sommelier, you know, it's, it's effectively providing the guidance, providing the education, providing the wine, certainly table side. And now I feel from reading your marketing and seeing what your pillars are, you and your wine angels are, are taking that to the next level and bringing it to us wherever we may be in the world. And, and I, think it's, uh, I, I think it's a very cool thing you're doing and I'm excited to see what happens next. You, you talked about the restaurant business. Um, during your tenure in restaurants and then as wine became more of a focus, how have you seen the wine world evolve? which I know is a broad question, but if you can help us understand it, I'd be grateful. Sure, I mean, you know, from even from the very beginning and curating wine lists and, and um, exposing your clientele to the world of wine, um, I feel like over the years, uh, people have become more knowledgeable. They know what they like a bit more. They're more interested in experimenting. They're not so label, um, you know, label hungry is as much as that. Um, and I also feel like on my end of things, wine has become more accessible. And I think that's something that I always wanted to get across. I don't think it should be, you know, just for certain people or there has to be a snobbery about it. It's like, I love the hand sell. I think there's a wine for everybody. It's such a personal journey because everybody's tastes are different. And uh, it's um, important to respect people's decisions and choices and tastes. So yeah, that was sort of where I wanted to go with that. Make, but also making sure that every single wine that I had for um, had the same level of quality, regardless of price or color or grape, um, that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I share with that idea too. I mean, being a, someone who's been in food for, geez, the better part of 35 years, there's this constant <clears throat> discussion of, you know, what, what makes good food and, and what should be paired. And people take this whole overly hypersensitive, sophisticated approach. And I think good folks like yourself are reminding us that there's lots to choose from and that there's lots that can be enjoyed regardless of brand names or varietal of grapes or region that happens to be trending. It's just, there's a good glass of wine to be had in your glass and, and you and your wine angels are the people to help us understand it, right? Absolutely. That's great. One other thing I've, I've learned recently about you and your, your team is that, you know, another pillar and another philosophy is that uh, smaller is better. And I was hoping you could help me understand and help some of our guests understand, like, well, what does that actually mean to you? What does smaller is better mean to you? Smaller is better it means to us that, you know, we're dealing with, with um, producers that are family oriented, that are not huge, big business, that have massive, you know, vineyards and wineries and, um, you know, are very connected from, from, the vine to the grape to the glass you know um i feel like too sometimes when companies are too big you sort of get lost in translation and i feel you know from a producer to an importer to an agent to a server or sommelier like you're all there with a common goal and to you know represent and uh, sort of show this wine in the best light and for me, I wanted to work with people who I had a direct connection with, and uh, and it just so happened that every producer in our portfolio is, it they're small, like we know we know who they are, you know we know who their family is, 
Um, and that was just sort of where I, I wanted to go with that. I, I love the sound of that. And for our listeners and viewers, um, you can visit gibsonfamilygroup.com uh, or on Instagram at gibsonfamilygrp, and you can get a sense of some of these small and intimate relationships that, uh, that the Wine Angels have cultivated. So I encourage everybody to go there. Um, I, and I love this philosophy that you and your angels have. And I'm going to give you a freebie while I was researching for this interview and I'm gathered all your information. I said, they need a new tagline. And I think based on their philosophy, the tagline could be the wine angels take you from vine to dine in the fewest amount of steps, like, you know, feeding off this whole farm to table. So what that said, what do you think makes a premium wine premium? you know, for, for a neophyte to the business, what, right. what would you think? Um, gosh, premium wine, premium is a, is a, an interesting word because I don't think premium necessarily has a reflection on the price tag per se. Yeah. Premium to me means that the, um, you know, from the, from the vinification of the wine to, you know, to how the vineyards have been treated. It's just that there is a, a level understood of how what the winemaker is doing, how he's treating his soils, how he's treating his grapes, how he is making his wine with minimal intervention. Um, and that you really are getting, regardless of the area, you know, their best product uh, possible. So, and I, it really doesn't reflect price tag because, you know, if it's a $20 bottle, it should be the best $20 bottle that they, they c it could be sort of thing. I don't know if that really answers that. No, no, it does. Thank you. I mean, a lot of the time when, when we think premium, we automatically think like upgrading the rims on our car. Well, a man might think that anyway, but it doesn't necessarily have to do with a physical manifestation. It can be the philosophy. It can be, you know, the premium way with which we respect our earth and the premium way with for sustainability. So I, I totally get that. And, and understanding that about you now, how would you and the angels choose who ultimately becomes part of the, the, the Gibson family group? Because you have this unique situation where you have the word family built in. So, you know, if I'm going to invite somebody to become part of the family, it seems to have much, much, much more weight. How, how do you decide who becomes part of the family? Yeah, I mean, it was something that I had back in the restaurant days too. It's like you're inviting somebody into your home and hosting a dinner party every wow. night kind of thing was my mantra in my restaurant days. But with the wine world, you know, um, I, I am a firm believer that family is so important. And when you're diving into a relationship and you're representing a producer or finding, a, a, you know, winemaker, you're going to work so closely with them that it needs to be a right fit. And uh, these are these are family that we choose. So um, when we're looking for that, it's just that we share the same we share the same ethos. We have the same ideas, you know. I've and and that the wine stands on its own. So you know we do we handpick every single bottle. There isn't like I said a producer I don't know. So. It's, um, yeah, it's sort of your family comes together. Fantastic. You know, there's that old saying that says, like, you can't choose your family, but you're in this illustrious position where you can. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and it looks good. You, you've got lots of great relatives in, in the Gibson family. It's nice, very nice to see. And I'm, I'm excited to see what's next. Um, we, to we talked a moment ago about sort of what makes a premium wine. And we, we started the conversation about sustainability. I know one of the other pillars for Gibson uh, family is uh, a connection to the earth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, a lot of people talk about this, uh, you know, having a connection to the earth. You know, Canadians are notorious for saying, like, we're happy to go green. But when they get a price tag that reflects the green product and they're like, oh, no, no, it's OK. I don't need to be green today. So, you know, wh what can you teach us about the winemakers? the wine producers, the family that is Gibson wine and your extended connection to the earth through all these good people. I, well, I mean, it, it, it came from my childhood because I, I'm, I grew up on an, an apple farm and, you know, my other family, my non-chosen family um, are very big apple farmers. And so I've always had a really huge respect for that sort of thing. And with a connection to the earth, um, 
you know, people do make, make um, it, they always just assume that it means that, oh, we're organic or we're biodynamic or that sort of thing. But, you know, it just means that you're doing, to me, you are doing everything you can to treat the planet better, um, you know, sustainability, there's rejuvenation, rejuvenating um, practices within the soil, you know, just that, that if you have to do something and you have to, you know, use something because there's an overwhelming amount of rot or mildew and you're going to lose everything, it's just knowing that you're going to do whatever you can to make this place um, sustainable keep on going so uh yeah it's it is it's a respect and i think that's a beautiful word to sum it up because i i you know raising three daughters of my own who are you know very very empowered as they should be uh and very woke as they remind me all the time um <laughs> you know i i remind them often that it's not just about the, the key word you know to have a general respect for what we call mother earth and a respect for each of you know the creatures and plants and, and animals in it is is enough to to show a respect and a connection to earth and and incidentally i spent a lot of time in the ottawa valley with friends who had apple farms and it's funny you say that about your history because i learned about a connection to the earth by spending time on these apple farms you know it was it was a very ethereal sort of experience being in fields and fields and fields and knowing what it does so uh uh, I'm proud of you that you've, you've connected with people that you feel are, are, are good to go. Well, you laugh, but you know, not everybody tells people like, we're proud of you and, and you're doing a great job. So uh, that said, nice segue. What's the most rewarding part about connecting your wines and your producers to your clients with, with this whole understanding of how you'd like to operate? I mean, the most rewarding part to me, um, is the feedback I get from the people when they drink it, um, and uh, the trust that they they give me um, to recommend and sort of guide them on a path they might not normally go. Uh, that to me is super rewarding, and introducing them to areas and regions and things they might not have even thought. But uh, yeah, I think I think that is the definite big that's the biggest thing that I find is rewarding is is the you know clientele that turn into friends yeah I, I agree and, and again being a, a food guy for my whole life I've always said that like very few things in or in you know very few interpersonal relationships require more trust than a stranger being willing to drink what you told them to drink or eat what you told them to eat and so, you know, it's clear from the successes that Gibson family is enjoying that there is a lot of trust and there's a bond with you and your clients and that there's a, there's a future for all of you to grow together as they become more learned thanks to, to your great teaching. So that's, that's great. You've got a great connection to the earth and you've got a rewarding relationship. I feel like you're going to just put more and more and more positive energy into the world. Do you, have, do you have anything else you'd like to add about the, the, the sort of earthy, sustainable connection that you want to share with us with things you're doing? Oh, God. Um, some things that we're doing as far as giving back kind of thing? or can, we're, this... it, it can be anything you want, or we can just hit pass. You know, we can pass on this one. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, I am involved in some other things, but I, yeah, that's maybe. That's fine. Olivia, time code that at 158 p.m. And this is where we'll have a pause. Okay, I didn't, so is this like, so we didn't do a run through, this is it? I'm, I'm yeah. assuming, oh You're shit. You're doing great, this is You it. tricked me. <laughs> That's my job. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, don't worry about that, I'll just come back and say something. <laughs> Does it sound coherent? Because I know you can, I get all over, it, it can be all over the place, right? Welcome back everybody to another edition of Inside the Box. We're uh, in conversation today with Leslie Gibson. She's uh, the, the, the chief wine angel at uh, the Gibson Family Wine Group. Uh, we've been talking about the, the pillars of what makes Gibson Family Wine Group the great entity they are. Um, finally, to have a little bit of fun. Can I cut? Yep. So it's... Welcome back, everybody. We're uh, here with another quick edition of Inside the Box, and we're in conversation with Leslie Gibson from Gibson Family Group. Uh, I want to remind our viewers and listeners to have a peek at gibsonfamilygrp.com 
And if you're uh, happy to hit Instagram, it's at Gibson Family GRP. Uh, Leslie's been sharing a lot of great ideas with us about what makes uh, Gibson Family Group fantastic. Uh, now I'd like to know about the fourth and final pillar in, in your, uh, your, your ideas, a love of grape in every glass. And we know that that means more than just the actual juice once it hits the crystal. But uh, if Gibson Family Group were a couture design house, tell me how you would describe its motivation and its style and its sort of place in a, in a fashionable world of, of wine. Um, I, I love this question because I, I am a sucker for a great pair of shoes. But um, I think, you know, if we were to describe it, there would be an understated elegance about um, about our comp about Gibson family group. Um, there would be accessibility to it. Um, and, and obviously with the quality that would be there. I, I get that. And, uh, and to, to share with the, our viewers and listeners, uh, you know, really truly have a, have a walk through uh, Gibson uh, family group, GRP, excuse me, uh, .com, because there's, uh, in addition to some great information and background on the wine angels, there's some uh, there's some great drawings. Uh, there's some great artwork. There's there is an overall feel of it does fit very much into the fashion world, which is an interesting juxtaposition against the fact of you know I can see you on Instagram walking in your rubber boots through a vineyard, and then we can we can talk about it in a very fashion forward way. So uh, very interesting stuff. Um, tell other people like myself who are by no means uh, a wine expert. What's a, one of the biggest myths about drinking wine? Like there's a lot of preconceived notions about vino out there in the world. What's one of the bigger myths that you can dispel for us? Oh gosh, I mean, there's a lot. Um, sure. You know, big myth number one comes to my head, sulfites. You know, sulfites are what make you sick, uh, that sort of thing. That's not really true because the, the actual um, reaction to sulfites is like a tiny percentile who actually have an allergy. A lot of people have, you know, histamine issues or actually just drink too much of the wine and they get headaches too. But um, to me, the biggest myth of all is that you have to be an expert to appreciate wine right. because you don't. And, and you know what, I, I hate to admit it, and uh, Dad, if you're out there watching, this is me admitting you were right once again. Uh, you know, my father's been yelling at me for years that a good bottle of wine is the bottle of wine that tastes good to you. And, and you know, it's very, very interesting to hear someone of your caliber in the industry share a very similar sentiment. And, and, and it is true, isn't it? It's, it's whatever's in your glass. It, it, it's so true and also to you know as as you grow or grow or grow older your palate changes I mean I'm drinking wines that are completely different to what I was drinking 20 years ago and you know some people say well my palate's more refined not necessarily true I mean it I would like to think it is a bit but not but it's just I think our tastes change as they do in fashion you know, our, our sense of smell and, and palates do change. I, that, that is a very good observation. And, and, and I know that happens in a micro way throughout mm -hmm. the course of the year. You know, I find myself, of course, drinking, you know, Beaujolais maybe in the fall and when the Nouveaux come out. And this summer, I was very excited about products from Oregon and Pinots that I was enjoying. So, yeah, I guess it happens in an annual cycle. And then throughout the course of your life, it changes, too. So that's, that's an interesting perspective. Thank you. One, uh, one final question before we let you go today. Uh, and this one's a loaded question and you don't have to answer it because I don't want you to, to upset or offend anybody. But th the question is as simple as it gets, but as complex as it gets. Which wine do you love most in your glass? Oh, gosh. I mean, usually the wine I love most in my glass is the wine that I'm drinking because <laughs> reason why I chose it for that moment um I to be honest I I I really do love wine um and I do drink a lot of wine um but currently I do have us I have a huge love and and big warmth for burgundy so that's where my glass usually takes me 
whether it's white, red, or rosé, that's sort of where I've been heading on a daily basis. <laughs> well, that uh, now I can fully appreciate the saying rosé all day, and now, now I've had a chance to talk about it with someone like you. Is, no. there, uh, is there anything else you want to share with us? It's been such a pleasure to chat. Uh, any other final thoughts or, or tidbits you'd like to leave us with? Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I, I just want to thank you guys as well. And uh, I, I think this has been a really awesome, uh, awesome interview with you. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I think uh, there's always a good reason to crack the bottle. Um, and uh, yeah, experiment and learn and enjoy and don't take things too seriously. And I think it'll all be good. I, I love that. And, uh, you know, my thanks today for you joining us here uh, inside the box for this chat. Uh, and, and my thanks most of all for giving me and, and anybody watching just a sense that um, we can engage with the product. It's an approachable product and we don't have to feel so stuffy about it. So uh, for everybody listening, please, please, please do yourself a big favor. Pour yourself a big glass of wine and head over to GibsonFamilyGRP.com. Uh, go on Instagram to see some of the great work. There's some live video there, GibsonFamilyGRP.com. My name is Don Sagarez. This has been another episode of Inside the Box. Thanks to everybody. Have a great day. <laughs>